Hi, my name is Gemma Burns. I'm a film and television music supervisor working at a company called Level 2 Music. My name is Nadine. I work for a company called Gaga Music. Uh, I am Leila Varel and I work for Electric Dreams Music Studio in Melbourne. <clears throat> How early into a production is a composer usually brought on board? Ideally, I would uh, start talking to the director about um, which composers they'd like to work with well before we even start filming. It's great for a composer to already start um, writing themes and ideas as early as possible so that when the editor starts actually putting together the material, they can already start editing two pieces of music that are actually going to be used in, in the long run. Just to add to that, it depends on which media or which format you're talking about. If you're talking about long yeah, form, I was which talking is film. really about feature films. And feature films and yeah. TV shows probably even. But if you're going to TVCs and ad, it's, a, it's probably the last um, thing that is thought about, the music that is. If you're working on long form, whether that be, you know, film or TV, is that it's a collabor you know, a creative collaboration, whereas advertising is generally it's seen as the director or producer's concept. It's not anything to do with the composer. For example, it's the artist, then there's the publisher, then there's a supervisor, mm -hmm. then there's a producer, then there's a director, then there's a studio manager. So we are all collaborating. It's it's you know in different forms and different ways, but mm -hmm. um, I guess in the end it still is a hugely collaborative yeah. process to make something like that work. Yeah. Is music something decided on before, during or after shooting phase of production? It's, I mean, I, I preferably start the conversation as early as possible, as I was saying. I like My, my role as a music supervisor is, is one of the first roles and one of the last roles. If, if we're going to need to use any music for scenes within the, um, within the story, as in, for example, if there was a rave scene, if anyone's performing a song, if anyone's dancing to music, um, all of that needs to be organised before they uh, start filming. Why is music so integral to film and television? I think it is, I mean, have you ever tried watching a film or an ad without music and I guess that's if you have ever tried that you'll see that uh, probably 50% of the emotion that is trying to be uh, relayed just falls away so I believe that's probably the most integral part of music is that it's trying to enhance an emotion <clears throat> that you're trying to yeah bring across. You don't need to say you don't need to hear very much to convey a feeling versus dialogue or versus a lot of other things and I think you see that especially in advertising, which are such short pieces, you know, it's like 30 seconds, 60 seconds. It's really not very much time to express what you're trying to sell. <laughs> trying to sell, yeah. yeah. And so the yeah. tone of the music matters a lot. Uh, do you need to be a composer or musician to work in this particular section of the film industry? To be able to pinpoint what the essence of a piece of music is and um, you know, what, what is it that that piece of music has conveying? It's more of a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's more of an instinctive thing than a, than a technical um, I think it prowess. definitely helps to have a couple, yeah, a, a broad understanding and I think everyone has engaged in some musical, you know, way and if, if it's playing piano or singing, um, but just being able to communicate with an artist um, about what you want from them or, you know, to try and help that process if you're able to communicate it in a clear way just by saying yeah, what yeah. emotion and I think it yeah. keeps coming back to emotion um, then you're you're fine it was something I was worried about when I started this job but then realized very quickly that you know it's totally fine yeah. Yeah. if there was one thing you could change about this industry what would it be I guess my hope is that the work would be valued for what it is I mean that's yeah. the that's the one thing that I guess most people worry about this kind of growing idea with a uh, younger generation that, that that music is something that's just their right to, they, they just have a right to it, but it, once it's out there, it sort of doesn't really belong to anyone anymore. Expecting to be able to just use people's music for free and, and thinking that it's not a, a commodity that's of any monetary value, where, where, whereas we all know that musicians spend an awful lot of time and energy putting together a piece of, piece of music, and, and at the end of the day, that's their bread and butter, that's their livelihood. And, yeah, I think that's a continuing issue for all of us is is um, the devaluing of music. I mean, we're we're in an, in an environment now where the entire music industry is changing, but it's moving from a major label structure to an independent um, structure, and that is something <coughs> that I, um, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping that's going to continue that way, and that um, the younger generation finds smarter ways of doing things and keeps up to date with technology as well, because technology will only help keep track of, yeah. um, you know, where your music is used, how it's being used, and will make sure that the money also finds its way back to, to you. 
Um, so I actually feel quite hopeful with where the music industry is going in that sense. Um, and, and, and you know, to add on that, I also hope that people are willing to take more of a chance on music as well and not always just go down the same um, safe route just mm. because it's a, it's a commercial, or in their opinion, it's the most commercial way to do it. Do you think music in film and television evolves in the same way that pop music evolves over time? It, with film scores and film music, it's definitely you know a very slow moving over a sort of periods of sort of ten years or so, as opposed to you know sort of trends in electronic music that's being used in television and also mm -hmm. obviously in commercials. In commercials, it's you know what what production techniques did Kanye just use in his latest uh, single or something like that? <laughs> yeah, you know, sure. It's much more um, based on current trends and much more fast moving. Do you have any tips? advice for deciding on writing music for student films. I think some advice would be to speak to people that are your peers that are writing music and to make it a collaborative effort with people that are coming up at the same time as you so that it's something where you can have that experience of from the very start getting to have those conversations and getting to have those ideas around the concept and build it up together rather than getting to the end and then trying to fit in music that you a might not be able to afford and you may potentially have something in mind that you're not going to be able to find and use. Well a, a very common um, thing that crops up with less experienced composers I find is that they'll try to put all the, the whole bag of tricks in the first um, score they write um, because they really want to impress and show everybody what they're made of, um, what they can do. Um, and I find one of the most common things is that directors are constantly saying just dial it back, dial it back, dial it back because, you know, unless it's a really conscious choice by the director to, to, to use music that really stands out from the film, for example, you know, the opening scenes in There Will Be Blood, the music really, you know, makes your skin crawl and that's very intentional. Um, for the most part, the film, the music really needs to sit in the film and in the story and, and, um, and, Anything that's too busy and distracting is not going to do that. So, um, yeah, I think it's just important to remember that you don't have to... You, you're not going to impress everybody by making a score that's overly busy and complicated. Are there any organisations that help young musicians get their music into film and TV? Um, I guess, yeah, there's, I mean, there's, a, there's a heap uh, of organisations. I mean, APRA being the, the probably the first obvious one. I hope for every every songwriter out there that you are registering your songs with APRA. Um, they're a great resource to be able to direct you to the, the you know the next stop where you would like to go. If that is film, if that's be, uh, finding a publishing company, which um, would probably be the next step uh, for a writer. Um, we, we're, we're, I guess, a young organisation. I mean, we're 10 years old, but we do um, pride ourselves on signing a lot of young and upcoming talent, and we really take that to heart and want to make sure that we can, yeah, get Australian talent out to the world. APRA is a really good resource for finding out things like this as well, as far as where you're based and who you can speak to. Uh, but yeah, publishers, sync agents, they're the people that are going to be able to get music to people like Gemma, uh, super music supervisors. I think yeah, um, we were saying yesterday as well that uh, it's not ever one thing or the other. It's it's just being active and being out there, whether that's playing shows, whether that's you know finding um, you know some collaborations, whether that's a record label. So the industry here is very small, and I think people talk amongst each other. And if you uh, you know Gemma will tell me the band that she saw last weekend and how great it was, and then I'll go and check it out, and maybe they're unsigned, and and you know one thing leads to another. So it's never just one path. It's definitely about being active and putting yourself out there and letting yourself being discovered, so putting yourself on all of those platforms. Um, things like Triple J on Earth is definitely a, a good platform for people such as us um, to go and yeah. search for new music <coughs> and up and coming artists. Have a look around, you're probably studying with the new generation of the music industry, you know, what is your next you know, your next your, your next door partner or, or neighbor on the table. What are what are they doing? Are they a musician? Are they an up and coming director? Are they a producer? Um, try and like form your contacts already here at uni. When I was back, you know, back in the day, I I, I think I got into the industry because of those contacts and because, um, well, you know, we knew each other and someone was working on that job and knew to contact me because I was good at producing or whatever it was. Um, so I think it's a really, really important part is to use the, um, the contacts and the assets you already have now um, to get out there. It's a really good jumping board if you use it wisely. 
Um, is definitely do as many internships as you can, even though I know it's hard work and you'll do long hours and you won't be paid. Um, try and choose your internships wisely where you can do it, where you know, you know is a field that you're interested in and you're getting value back, even though you may or may not be getting paid. Um, and then last but not least is treat it as you know, a professional job. Um, there is still this common perception out there that the fact that we're working in the creative industries uh, is that it's all very leisurely and you know I'll be alright but that's just not the case. If you don't treat it as a job and you don't put yourself out there, if you're not proactive and you're not professional, um, you're not going to get very far.